You're locked into the two, 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 bro, one slow podcast. Someone has put here for Tommy, how much difference does a full factory motocross bike make? Um, I can touch on that and then we can talk about GPs for a minute. It depends. Um, depends how your red is. If your red's in the game, it might. Nah, I think in motocross these days it's a big difference. Matt, across yeah, but you can difference. put loads of people on a factory bike that do shit. No, but the, there's a big difference. But it's almost it'd made be, my decision do well to, to, n- to ride a stock bike. Well, not a stock, but a non-factory bike and do good though. Obviously, it makes a difference. It's the working. factory bike for my where I can compare the two is when I went was riding for Boss Kawasaki last year, and I know I had a lot of problems with Boss um, for different reasons. But when the bike was running, it wasn't a terrible bike. The Did they like croissants? They did, yeah. <laughs> um, that was nice on the team. Um, but although I had some problems throughout the year, that when the bike was running, I raced it in the British Championship. wasn't a uh, suspension was decent when we got it set up. And um, in the end, the engine I just pretty much ran a standard engine, which a standard engine on the four fifty is all right. But um, I didn't get when I was starting. I was getting about fifteenth off the start every week. I'd get the odd good time in qualifying, um, and then I could sort of run with the guys fifth, sixth place, just behind them. For a little bit, then they'd edge away. The odd race, I'd get top 10. Majority of the time, just outside the top 10, I think, results-wise. Sometimes 15th, 16th, and sometimes I just wouldn't finish at all. But, um... <laughs> uh, no, not because I pulled out. out. No, <laughs> well, some t- one time in uh, Russia I did, didn't I? The boat broke... Sat, the, br- the Sorry, the bike broke. And then I said, look, enough's enough, lads. This is dangerous out here. <laughs> um, and then I sort of spoke with him and says, what are we going to do? Um... And they says, well, I don't know either. So we said we made the team decision to just not race. Um, but then when I jumped on a factory bike, I actually was riding with broken rib at the time and I still got the whole shot in the first race I'd done on it. And then I finished fifth place, um, which was probably the were by far the best result I got all year. And I think my lap time was 0.1 off the best of the race, which was Tim Geyser who won the heat race. Um, and then I got fifth overall at the first GP. So the difference was was huge in that case. And the factory Kawasaki was um, one of the best bikes I've ever rode. So I think at GP level, it's so, so important. I think you can go fast for one lap on any bike, but when you're going at that pace for 30 minutes, it's, um, what are you laughing at? This question um, I've just come across. <laughs> but you when you're going to them now, which is a good answer. It's but when you're question. going fast for a long period of time, when you're on a factory bike, you can make less mistakes or a small mistake is less costly because the bike picks up and um, so almost travels forward a lot easier. You, you miss out on the, like you can be in second gear or third gear yeah. where on a standard bike, production bike, you're gearing and um, things are so crucial to get right where you have a little bit more um, leeway as such on a, on a bigger bike. So you go faster, easier. Yep. If yep. that makes sense. So no, I think that was a good answer. And and after, I agree. Yeah, and after not that I've done it. many MSGP races, but no, but you like can tell on a factory nah, from a standard husky now. Like to a people, there's a there's like a, there's not a big difference, but then there is at the same time. Like yeah, there's exactly there's that. a lot of to ride and initially feel there probably wouldn't be a big difference, but then like you see, when you start doing twenty minutes and then you start to get a little bit tired, and normally you'd be getting a little bit lazy and hitting a few more bumps, which you probably were skimming to start off with. The bumps then. Won't make won't make as big of a difference, mm. and you won't feel them as much. Whereas you're on a stock bike, and you start getting a bit tired, and the elbows come down, and you start smashing into bumps, and it starts bouncing your left, right, and yeah. centre. So then you use even more energy trying to counterbalance that, and like, um, and you just fall <coughs> off that. But then you think about it; a it's probably on a factory bike, it's probably four people's job to make the bike better at doing that. Whereas when you're on a stock bike, it's literally no one. You're just there with your fucking screwdriver turning a few clickers like it's understandable why there is such a difference say if you the race i went to watch in um the last round where you won the world championship outdoor race if you was to go around on a stock bike you could do almost you could probably do everything get around just as quick for one lap yeah 100 percent. like you could and and i also think people need to realize like if everyone was on a stock bike the results would be pretty Same. similar yeah. like that doesn't make a difference it's in terms of like results wise but I think like from from that race particularly you'd probably start when you start getting tired I'd say our en- our engine's a little bit smoother and a lot more a bit more power at the bottom so when you start to get tired you can kind of lay off the clutch a little bit and just pu- use the engine to pull you up stuff whereas with a stock bike um, it revs a bit faster and the clutch is a bit more on off and stuff like that so then you've got to be a bit more precise so then you'd probably start spinning up a lot more and 
the tree roots and things mm. would affect you. Um, same with like suspension, stock suspension. When you start to go fast, it bottoms out a lot easier and there's not as much hold up in the fast section. So like I was <clears throat> obviously coming from being sixth place with my finger up my ass, fucking around. Like I was pushing on a little bit on the faster sections and you just have like more security and more safety when you do, you know, you're like come over the brow of a hill and think, oh fuck, there's a rock in the line there. Whereas you can kind of just hit it. Whereas on a stock bike, you'd probably be... Yeah, you'd want to be get it perfect. Yeah, you'd have to be lifting your front wheel already for it. It, it, it would in on my bike, it probably won't bounce you or knock you out of place or knock you off rhythm as much. So, like, I mean, it just it just helps. It's just nicer. Um, but, like, at the same time, like I say... You can do it all on a standard bike. Well, you someone's gone it. and spent a lot of time setting up your bikes. That's what I mean. Also, so standard bikes, better. like, not... Ex- yeah, but... Yeah, it's someone's job. All good it's someone's well. job to make it like that yeah. specifically. Whereas when they're make, building a stock bike, you've got to think they've got to make a bike which a guy for a few pe- like different a, people, a fifth a guy who's sixty kilograms and a guy who's hundred kilograms can get on it and and ride. You know what I mean? Whereas but you're you're making you test the bike like you've been testing R and D bikes twenty twenty four, but at some point that's going to be the stock bike. Yeah, well, exactly. That's what I mean, like th- there's a lot a lot of for a lot of people, a stock bike would be very well set up. The pole, it's just obviously impossible to make a perfect bike for such a broad range of people. That's mm-hmm. where when you get a factory bike, there's people there and their job is to, okay, you're here, put put the stock bike in, head, head the stock bike completely in that direction and exactly what he needs. Whereas a stock bike has such a broad range of what it's good for. It needs just channeled, channeled more. What should everyone do when they get a stock bike? In motocross? Mm, get... Make um, it comfortable, I reckon. Yeah, Bars, comfortable. foot pegs, just oh, be comfortable. Try to, try to give you the... Go to K-Tech. Yeah, I feel like yeah, bars well, and... Important. Get co- yeah, well, no, comfortable. Obviously, if, if if they're tiny or they're massive, then they're probably going to need springs. Yeah, bars. Is, if you put great suspension on, but then roll your bars in, like... Uh, well, well, also, you're not going to be able to work was, That's why I said get comfortable. Mm. No, get comfortable. Hands and feet are what's in touch with the bike. They have to be comfortable. But I could... Um, Quite easily, or not quite easily, you could win a race with a standard motor when I rode, or standard engine. When I raced um, Kawasaki, I raced in the British Championship, some races with a standard engine. Mm. But you wouldn't race as such with standard suspension. So, I if agree. out of the two... Uh, it, yeah, that's a good, good, two, to good point. Enduro are the same, I would have said. If... You could go to the British sprint, if you only you had go to the, the British uh, race this weekend with a standard engine and win. Yeah, if they only had budget... For up, upgrade your suspension, upgrade your engine. I would pick suspension, especially 450. You don't, you, your engine's good. 